Kia ora everyone and welcome back. This is Civ 5 and today I'm doing something a little different. I'm going to dive into some top tier civs that you might want to play. I figured as you're watching my tutorial series and you're learning and you're playing, you might want to know who to play as, because we haven't really talked about it. Uh, if you'd like more content like this, I'm thinking about expanding this out, creating its own series, where I delve in a little deeper into each of the civilizations, in Civ 5, potentially in Civ 6, maybe both in the same video, I don't know, but if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, let's dive into my top three top tier civs in Civ 5. They're going to be Poland, Korea, and then my third and secretly I think favorite Arabia. So let's start with Poland and as you can see on screen here there are a whole load of civs and there are lots of tiers online and people ranking this and that. I'm going to start with Poland and I'm going to rank them based off single player uh, predominantly. I'm going to rank them based off how strong they are in an average game on a Pangaea map. Okay so there, there are lots of variables but let's talk Poland. They have the winged hussar a fantastic unit and they have their unique stable which gives production and gold from your pastures that's your horses that's your sheep that kind of thing your cattle those improved resources are going to give you additional gold and production which is fantastic and very strong you should try and get that set up as early as you can because of course you're just going to get exponential growth out of it in the long run so that's one of Poland's key strengths. Their unique unit, which replaces the Lancer, is also incredibly strong. Uh, oh, and also you shouldn't forget that Poland want you to like the video and subscribe if you want to join our rapidly growing community as well. <laughs> kind of weird, but I mean, I'm not going to argue with the Poles. More specifically though, and seriously, what Poland does best is its unique ability and it's a very straightforward one but it's a incredibly profound as a civilization playing as poland you will get one free cultural policy whenever you advance through an era you're probably all going well but not too well going to be playing through five or six maybe even more eras throughout your playthrough that means every time you advance an era, whenever you move from the Stone Age to the next, or from the Renaissance to the Medieval to the Modern, whatever it might be, you get a free policy. Now you can play that one of two ways. You can ignore somewhat your cultural development and focus instead on what Poland does best, which is, to be honest, a balanced victory, but uh, a domination victory supported by a really strong science game is probably your best bet. So you can ignore your culture because you just rely on those free policies rolling through. So you don't need to have a super strong culture because you get them for free. Alternatively, you could take it the real balanced route because Poland is considered to be a very balanced civilization. You could take it a real balanced route and just build up your culture as normal, get those free policies, and become an absolute powerhouse as you push through the cultural tree. Uh, overall, Poland is an incredibly strong sieve. You'll get probably seven free policies or tenants that'll be yours to keep. You can react to developments throughout the game, which leaves you very flexible because you have those free policies. And overall, it makes Poland not only potentially the best civilization in the game, but well suited to any victory type. Next up is Korea. Korea is one of the most well-known powerful civs in the game and they're incredibly strong in the science division. Uh, they're a tall empire generally that's focused on specialists. Now their unique units, the Hwacha pronunciation citation needed, which replaces the trebuchet and the turtle ship, which replaces the caravel, are to be honest, nothing special. And I won't spend time dwelling on them other than to say that basically the unit that they replace uh, is, is an early game unit and these unique replacements are not particularly strong because of their downsides but what we what we really want to focus on here is uh the fact that that sort of leads korea to be more of a defensive civilization because both of the units are more focused on protecting your territory and land and sea but science is obviously korea's game uh, you can play a strong cultural game potentially with uh, great writers and artists but um at the end of the day, it's science that you're going to focus on because Korea gets plus two science from all specialists uh, in a city and a tech boost 
every time a scientific building or wonder is built in the Korean capital. The wonder part isn't quite as strong, but the, the science bonus from specialists mean that Korea is the obvious choice for a science victory in Civ 5. Now, I won't spend any more time on Korea today, but if you'd like to hear more, like I say, we can talk about that in another video. But thirdly, here we have Harun al-Rashid himself of the Arabian Empire. And Arabia is my third pick. Now, out of these three picks, Arabia is the only one I believe to feature in the base game. But hopefully, anyone who's watching this uh, doesn't just have the base game, but they have the, uh, of course, the DLC as well, because that is a no-brainer for a game that is now 11 years old. <laughs> I really hope you have the full version. Let's talk about Arabia uh, and, and what makes Arabia different in this top three. Arabia is much more of an economic powerhouse than Poland or Korea ever could be. However, your victory condition could really be anything. Uh, I would suggest a diplomatic victory with all the money you're going to make, but domination in science uh, are other potentials that you could investigate. So let's talk Arabia. Arabia is, I believe, an incredibly powerful civilization. And that economic edge and that trade edge and their unique abilities are really unrivaled. They have a desert start bias, which can potentially make an early religion favorable if you choose desert folklore. Uh, Petra should probably be built uh, to enhance your terrain and your ability. Um, your ability promotes a wide empire. You want to build as many caravans as you possibly can. Build your trade routes and spread your religion through them. Um, the unique building promotes a wide empire as well because it provides a second copy of every improved luxury near the city. So if you have gold, say, that I, like I've just traded there, and you improve it, you'll now have two golds, which means you can keep one. I'm talking about the luxury resource, by the way. You can keep one and you can trade one away and suffer no penalty because you've got an extra copy of each. It's incredible. It is really, really incredible. I can't stress it enough. It encourages you to expand, of course, so you can obtain as many different luxuries as you'd like to trade with other civilizations. All of your excess money and your excess luxuries therefore makes it easier to bribe city-states or other civilizations. You could also use it to purchase items or fund research agreements. The opportunities are truly endless. Since your religion spreads easier, uh, there are a variety of founder and follower beliefs as well that you can take advantage of. Um, domination is a strong option for you as well if you'd like to go that way. Your unique unit, the Camel Knight, is incredibly strong. And later in the game, the, uh, the fact that your oil is doubled from your ability uh, can create a really strong late game army based around black gold. <laughs> but anyway, everybody, that is all for today's video and me going into some of the top tier civs in Civ 5. Uh, hopefully you've learned something new and, and a quick overview of Korea, Poland and Arabia. As I said at the beginning, if you'd like to hear more of this, I would love to spend a bit more time and go uh, into more depth into individual civilizations or strategies, uh, you know, win conditions, the so unique units. I'm thinking in Civ 5, but this could also play out through Civ 6 or really a, a whole number of things. So thanks so much for watching and uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that kind of content. And otherwise, I'll catch you next time.